Okay, I finished wiring up the Argo Navis podium and I'm showing the Argo here. You can see the cables in the back. Basically the silver RJ11 goes into the serial 1 port. Then the RJ45 cable for the encoders goes into the encoder port and then the DC power in. That will let you run the Argo with external power. Down at the bottom the wires go through the podium, come out here and then they plug into our electrical panel. Uh, you got your two 12 volt power supplies and then the RJ45, RJ11 and the RJH there on top. So you can see this one goes to this cable which comes up to the hand pad. Okay, I went ahead and unplugged all the wires because I just want to show some. You know, pretty much if you bring the wires up to the to our electrical plate here they pretty much dictate which way they go in in fact if you just plug one wire in you almost can see you know this one goes here this one goes here and then the RJ45 will go in there so the point is is if you just kind of drape the wires up against the uh, scope pretty much dictate where they go in the front of the podium, there's two more wires coming out. These will continue on to the encoder arm and then eventually to the top of the mirror box to finish the connection. The next step is to start assembling the mirror cell and uh, mirror box. Starting to put the mirror cell together. Here's the triangles and crossbars. Uh, this is an 18-point cell. Uh, everything, all the pivots are on bearings, so it's 100% full floating. First thing I'm going to do is put the centering ring on. This will keep all the triangles from moving around. The ring mounts to the inner radius of the triangles. It's held in place with these six screws. Uh, they are all tightened down. However, the triangles can move freely. I have the uh, inner cell frame here. I'm going to mount the crossbars and triangles to it. So these just, uh, the bolts will just come all the way through the frame get nutted on the back. Okay, I got all the triangles mounted up. Now I talked to you about this ring and how it's free from the triangles. However, the triangles could also do this with the ring being completely free. So we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that our cell points stay in the uh, proper place. So one of these screws has a nut on it. I know you can't see it. After I center out all the points, will come in, tighten this nut, and what that will do is that will lock this triangle from being able to move on the ring, which keeps all of them in place. Here's the cell frame flipped face up. Okay, I'm assembling the mirror cell. Um, mirror cell pretty much comes to you maintenance free, so there's nothing you have to do to it. Uh, this side, you can see I already finished the top clip and the lower edge support and bottom clip. Just thought it'd be a good idea to show you how it goes together. Uh, for the top clip, there is a rubber sleeve that goes over the bolt. We'll push that down. Then there is a nylon bolt that has a set screw in it that will screw down to the correct height for the clip. The clip will go on and then a series of nylon washers, there's no specific whatever it is at the time. And then we have another nylon nut that goes on the top, but we actually set this up so the nut will bottom and then we could tighten it up to get tension on the clip. Okay. For the lower edge support, we have a series of nylon washers and then stainless shims that will go like that to create a smooth movement. This will go on top again. This height for where these are going to contact the edge and the mirror is already preset. Nothing you have to do. Um, this gets locked down with a nut that has a set screw in it. This will actually bring down by hand, lock it down, get the feel that I want, and then I'll lock out the set screw with the Allen key. Um, the last thing is will be the rollers that the mirror actually rides on. We have some stainless steel shims there, put these on, and then we'll put two more stainless steel shims and then lock nuts, and we'll get these so that they spin pretty free. 
Um, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll go ahead and get the cell in the cell frame. Here's a shot of the inner cell frame completed. I'm getting the mirror box cell frame set up to install it. Our mirror cells only have two collimation bolts. We do not put in the third. Instead, we have this that creates the third point where the cell will pivot on. This also acts as a support to carry all the mirror weight and inner cell weight with no movement. I installed my inner cell frame into the mirror box frame. Uh, it goes in pretty straightforward. You put it down on the top two collimation bolts and then line up the bottom and uh, put the bolt in the bottom. Uh, just a quick note here, between this lower support and the inner cell frame there is a shim. This is custom made for every scope so it supports the frame in the correct place. If you ever take this thing apart, make sure that goes back in there. Show you real quick, there's those rubbers that are under. You can see that it's compressed. This again uh, will assist with any reoccurring vibration in the cell frame. We have nuts that we hand tighten to get the right tension on the collimation bolts. And then I have a rather large cap screw in there that acts as a set screw. I do that so it's easily seen and accessible when the scope's fully assembled. Okay, that pretty much uh, finishes that. And we're going to move on to installing the optional boundary layer fans.